Hi everybody, this is David for Evil Twin. I'm really excited to be releasing version 1.1, and I want to thank everybody for their feedback, suggestions, and questions over the last few months. They are very helpful and always welcome. Um, without further ado, I'm just going to get right in and show you the changes. The first one you'll notice is that uh, the Help and Settings panel is now just become a Settings panel. For any help, just check out the user manual, which is pretty detailed. As you can see, the settings panel is now simpler and more minimal. We still have the channel IDs settings, which are the text strings that represent your different channels in your project. Um, we still have the 3D display settings. And you'll notice the, the wiggle options at the bottom are gone. And I'll get to that later. Uh, we've done some improvements on the wiggle function. First, I want to take a look at the 3D display settings. As before, we have the horizontal resolution and vertical resolution. We've also added the preferred S3D mode option. The preferred S3D mode can be any of these six options. Note that we've added checkerboard and interlace, and I'll show you that in a minute. Whichever of these is selected will be the mode at, in which your stereo comp is created. It can be changed any time, but this could save you time. This could save you from going into the settings and tweaking things every time you create one. So that's the new simplified settings panel. Let's take a look at the 3D display settings. So here we have a comp featuring Piano Guy from the promo video. In the promo video we had fire, this one we have snow. First thing I'm going to do is show you um, the, the new stereo viewer comp. So let's take a look by highlighting Piano Man Snow L and clicking SVU and that automatically creates my stereo comp which is just opened automatically. And I'm going to zoom in. So remember, I had selected checkerboard in the settings panel. So it's been created in the checkerboard stereo mode. If you're working on a monitor that has the polarized checkerboard method, then you might be able to look at your work in 3D while the rest of your UI is in the normal 2D. So you can just kind of put your glasses on and off and not change monitors. It's very quick. And for those of you who may not know, you can open up your S3D settings layer right here and change the S3D mode to any of the options. All right, so the next thing I want to take a look at is the wiggle function, which, uh, as I understood, was not working very well on CC or CC 2015. So we've made some major improvements to the wiggle function. It now uses the RAM preview. So if we take a look in this comp and just click the W as before, we get this alternating playback of the, the left and right images wherever my cursor was when I hit the W button. To stop the wiggle, you've got to push this stop wiggle button on the window that pops up and everything goes back to how it was. You do need to make sure that the options that are currently shown in the preview panel um, will work with a two frame loop. Definitely you want your range to be work area and you want skip zero frames um, some people might find 24 frames per, per second or 30 a little bit too fast for a wiggle. So you might just turn that down a little bit or a lot and click wiggle again. This is a speed I prefer because you can actually take a moment and see each eye. Um, I find it a little bit clearer. Okay, and lastly, we have a new and improved S3D camera rig which I'm going to demonstrate using this snow comp using some particles. Now, as before, to create an S3D camera rig, you select uh, an existing camera layer and click the cam button. And that will add another camera layer using the original name uh, with the tag evil twin, as well as a new adjustment layer that contains effects and settings that you use to control the evil twin camera. Now, remember that the evil twin camera is a single camera layer that behaves one way in the left comp and another way in the right comp, and together that gives you the stereoscopic effect. So the effects are controlled through the Evil Twin Camera Controls layer, seen right here, and we'll just take a quick look. First thing we're going to do is put this comp into anaglyph viewing mode by holding down Alt and clicking the W. As you can see, now my eyes look very different. I just need to click the LR Clone button to update it. Okay, and first thing we're going to do is to set the camera interocular distance. These are the this is the number of pixels between the left and the right camera. As we ship this value, 
the stereoscopic 3D effect becomes more or less pronounced. I'm going to leave that right there. Just so that I can see this better, I'm going to use on-the-fly convergence, which I've covered another, in another tutorial, by just highlighting the evil twin right layer and going to the viewer and sliding this over manually. This gives me an overall convergence just for my viewing situation in the comp right now. It's a guide layer, so wherever I use this comp elsewhere, this convergence will not be applied. Back to the Evil Twin camera controls. Left nodal is unchecked by default. If you check this box, the left camera will be aligned perfectly with the master camera, and the right camera will be shifted by the entire interocular distance to the right. Now by default, it's unchecked, uh, which means that the left goes half the interocular to the left, and the right goes half the interocular to the right, which is by far the more common uh, setup for an S3D camera rig. And you just keep editing your master camera, and the left and right will follow accordingly. That goes for position and any other property, including the camera options. By default, the S3D camera is a parallel camera system, which means that the left and right cameras look in the exact same direction. Um, you might want to work with converged cameras, in which case you simply click this box to enable converged cameras. And then you need to set the convergence depth. By default, it's at 1000. Uh, you might want to converge it closer. And of course, what you're going for is some combination of your interocular and convergence depth. Once you've, once you've enabled converged cameras, you might want to play with both of them. You might also want to readjust your on-the-fly convergence so that you can look at it better. Now, when you use a converged camera, it's likely to introduce a certain amount of vertical distortion, especially around the edges of the frame. So you can see that the particles uh, further out from the center are vertically misaligned, and if you're wearing 3D glasses right now, it should be pretty hard to look at. So we need to fix that. And for that purpose, we've added this keystone correction system which you enable by enabling the keystone corner pin effect. And you use this keystone correction slider to set the amount of correction that you want. Now the goal is to find a value where basically all the particles become realigned. Um, it's not going to be perfect since um, not only does the distance from the center affect things, but also the depth of the particles. So particles at different depths in space are going to have more or less pronounced effects in the first place. So if you apply a blanket correction to everything, they're going to be subtly different. But we can definitely improve upon what we had before by using this quick correction effect. So that's looking better. Uh, one thing I want to point out is that uh, as we use a corner pin to fix this, you do lose areas of the frame on the outside. For this reason, you might want to work with a larger comp than what your target output is. Um, that depends on how much correction you're going to need. So if we just use the, uh, the region of interest in the viewer here, we can take a look at that. So this might reflect the size of the comp that you're going to go for. One thing to note about the keystone correction is that if you use this in a comp where you also have 2D layers, um, the keystone corner pin effect is going to be applied to those layers too, and it will introduce distortion that wasn't there beforehand. So if you're using converged cameras, I highly recommend pre-comping your 3D camera work and then blending that with your footage layers uh, in another comp. Okay, that covers it for the S3D camera rig. It's a lot more robust and flexible than it was before, and it should work much better with existing 3D plugins. Again, thanks for watching. Thanks for all the feedback, questions, and suggestions. I do take them seriously, so please send any comments to this email. Download the new version and let me know what you think. Thanks a lot.